Hey guys, welcome back to another mini tutorial. I'm going to call it that because it's not going to take me very long to show you what I'm showing you. Um, I've had some requests for um, just this part here, what you're looking at. Um, it's just very simple. These are called either little spirals or they're called curly cues. I'm sure they have other names, but um, they're just a very simple uh uh, just a regular design. You can use them on, um, uh, depending on the type of thread or yarn or hook you use. You can use them anywhere from jewelry to package designs to uh, just um, basic decorations to Christmas tree designs or decorations you can uh, put up for the holidays. You can use them for any diff a hundred different things. Um, what I'm going to show you today is I'm actually using it for a cat toy for Georgie and for Henry. So I just kind of, since I was up so early this morning, I just kind of put a couple cat toy designs together myself. Something that I think my uh, fur babies would like. But what you're looking at is I done a very long uh, curly cue, which is this uh, brown flecked one. You see it's got fleck in it, and I did use the Red Heart yarn for this, and then I did a smaller one, and I joined it around the bigger one, uh, and then I just put some uh, little um, tassels on it, little fringe, and Georgie loved it. So that's a very simple design that I was working on this morning. It doesn't take much. You don't even have to have a name for it for the cat, for the cats to like it. So he loved it. It was just something sporadic and something that you know you dangle in front of them and they love that stuff. Um, this one I just made basically like a, a stuffed ball. Now what I thought was cool about what I did with this one, yeah, you can add um, the stuffing, which is the um, uh, the the white puffy stuff and of course I'm having a little brain moment I can't even think of the name of it but uh, you know it's the stuff and stuff and um, uh, you can also add catnip and I don't have any at this moment I don't have any catnip but what I thought um, I've had made toys for my cats before and <clears throat> excuse me I have put stuffing in here before and once they get their claws into there they start pulling the stuffing out and it makes a big mess and it doesn't last near as long so I got my little genius idea going in here what I did is I took a uh, a small ball of yarn which is of course great for scrap balls and I just unrolled and unrolled and unrolled it and before I got about this far up before I closed it I just stuffed and stuffed and stuffed that um, ball of yarn but I unwinded it first I unwound it excuse me <laughs> I'm doing my southern nature here I unwound the ball and then stuffed the yarn inside there that way if he decides to prick at this and pull anything out he's just gonna pull strands and strands and strands of connected yarn it's not gonna be loose so they're not gonna you know um, just be everywhere all over the floor but he's just going to pull random strands out of this and they're just all going to be still in the ball not going to make a mess so he's just going to have little loopies like this hanging out everywhere so it'll add that much more fun to his uh, little ball toy so I thought that was kind of a neat, neater idea but if you want to you can also add a little catnip in here and I would have had I had some but I will pick some up for the next toy so that was my idea and I thought that was going to turn out cute but anyway that's not the lesson the lesson here is the curly cues so what I'm gonna have you to do I'm gonna add some more curly cues on to the end of this ball so I just wanted you to see what um, this side looked like and I'm gonna work the other side here um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna do a mini one so what I did is I chained I believe it was 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9, yeah I did 10 and go ahead and do um, now what you gotta realize about doing your curly cues is that um, when you're making these say if you want yours to be this length of a curly cue you need to chain maybe I don't know 17 18 19 20 because it's gonna draw up okay the the technique to these curly cues is they're gonna draw up as we do this project so if you want it this length you need to make it about twice as long in your beginning chain so what we're going to do is we're going to begin in the second chain from your um, hook and you want to keep your stitches loose whenever you make your uh, foundation chain as well. 
So we're going to put uh, five or six. You can even do seven. It's up to you how, however curly you want your end to be. And see your end right here is going to have the most stitches because it's going to make your beginning uh, curly part. So I'm going to put about six in the beginning. Uh, or the second chain from the hook. So that's two. Three. Four. five and six okay so that's what you'll have when you get six into there now during the process you are going to be sliding these because you don't want to lose any stitches otherwise your curling process won't happen correctly so you see how far I had to scooch these over to find that next stitch that next stitch is going to be right in here so do not skip that right there it is okay so that's going to be your most difficult um, stitch to find is that second one there. So one, two, on all your stitches after that first one, you're going to put four. So we're putting four here. Three. And it's a little difficult, so you've got to get a grasp. And then there's four. Okay, so you want to scooch those over, and then you'll find your next stitch. And you're going to do four. One, two, three, four. All right, and then you'll start to see things curl a bit. You see that? And that's the way it's just going to continue to happen. You want to continue to slide and just continue on to your next stitch and you're going to do four and you'll have to bear with me it's just I have to work at a different angle under my camera and this is a, um, a different process altogether working your foundation chain with this stitch is just a little bit more tedious okay so you're just going to keep working it no matter how long you make your initial chain you're going to work it the same way so that's whoops, two, three, four. Okay, you can scooch that and it'll unveil your next one. So one, two, three, and four. Okay, scooch that over a bit. There's your next one. One, two, three, and four. Okay, we're almost there. One, two, three and four and the last one let's get that in there one the last one gets six as just like the first one did or however many you done there two three four five and six okay so you see that your curly cue took its toll just like that and then basically all I did whenever I was joining mine is I just joined it to my ball and then it just added um, you know to my little uh, cat toy there now as far as um, stitches go you do not have to do these little curly cues in uh, single crochet you can do them in any stitch you know your singles your doubles your triples your half doubles you can do them in any stitch there um, you cannot do them in a fancy stitch not to my knowledge and I wouldn't try um, but uh, these are your curly cues, and like I say, people use them on the top of hats, and, you know, I've done that before. 
Um, they're very fun, um, especially when you get with the fancier yarns and you put them on type on type on top of packages, um, like for the holidays and birthday gifts and stuff like that. Um, they go really well with bows, um, different things like that. You can add them to ponytail holders. Um, they're so much fun. Um, so Georgie has already tested this one out and he loves it. So once I get a couple uh, twisties going on the other side of this this one here, um, he's going to have a field day. He's already tried taking them both away from me, but I told him they got to go on video this morning. So he wasn't happy. <laughs> so anyway, this is just an example. Um, like I say, you can uh, do it with many different um, types of yarn. Just monitor what hook size you use. Um, you can do it with thread. You can make earrings. You can make pieces of jewelry that uh, hang from necklaces. Um, you can make rings out of it. You, there, the possibilities with uh, these little twisties or curly cues are so endless. Um, so just have fun with this uh, little um decoration piece and um you know just just go and have fun with it that's all i can tell you to do it's just really a fun uh piece to work with but anyway um you just pretty much cut your yarn here and i would do that if i had my scissors my little scissors grew legs and took off on me so that's all there is to it to make your curly cue you can make them extremely long you can make little short ones like i said mine are different sizes right there and you can join them to make rings. So there you have it. That is your tutorial on the curly cue or these uh, little spirals. Until next video, guys, happy hooking.